What is up? Welcome to this week's episode of Lamb Goats Van Flip Podcast. Today I am joined by Tyler from the Louisiana-based rock and roll band Capra. How are you doing today, buddy? Great, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, no, you're good. And to clarify, not really rock and roll, but you know, it's a slew of genres. Metallic hardcore is what they're calling it these days, but hardcore, screamo, post-hardcore is a little bit of everything. That's tossed right. into the mix. Blend it all together. Yeah, you guys got a busy, busy week coming up, and then you got a busy uh, rest of the year. I, I think you guys just recently uh, released a new single. This is going to come out in a couple weeks, but in the in today's time, I think last week or this week, you've re- released a new single and announced the next album that's coming up through Metal Blade on, in October. Yes. Yeah, so we got we have definitely uh, rest of the year is absolutely insane. Um, most of the most of which we've announced some of. Some of it will come pretty soon. Uh, just released the new single, first single from the the new album titled Errors. Um, and then we should have another one out in about a month or so. Nice. So, yeah, right, right around the time this comes out, I think, that yeah. single will be hitting. And if you're watching the podcast and you see me dab my forehead and or mouth, that's because I had to run downstairs to grab my headphones to talk to Tyler. But like Tyler is experiencing... I live in Florida, he's in Louisiana, and we are having like the coolest summer of all time where it's like 130 degrees every day and the humidity yeah. is up to 150%. So you step outside and instantly you're covered in sweat no matter how long you're out you're there. You're wet. So, yeah. yeah. Is that fun for tour? Because I know you guys, you, you guys probably DIY tour a lot. You know what I mean? I, I'm assuming like crash on floors, hotels when you can, kind yeah. of the, or sleep uh, in the van if you if you have to. Right. We, we haven't done, I mean, we've done like the, you know, a full U.S., which like it's just anywhere in the South is bad. You got the different levels of heat. We, we did the full U.S. tour last summer, driving just through the desert. I mean, even with the AC cranked was pretty rough, like a dry heat. So yeah. uh, that's not fun. Mm-mm. We don't play too much around this area. Uh, we'll either do like we'll go up the East Coast, we'll do West Coast and, and Northern areas. So it's it's cool to feel cooler weather. Yeah, especially in the summertime, because down here yeah. in the southeast it is brutal with the fucking humidity and everything. But um, you know what? One thing I didn't realize about driving out west, especially during the summer and uh, during the daytime, is like you were saying, like you have to have the AC on all the time. But you're also like looking into the sun all day long, so it's just like day. it's just like heating the car up yeah. or the van up the entire time. And that was the best a part is that for for that last uh, U.S. tour, uh, we were with Bummer. And they had no AC in their van. So we were, we were worried about them for most parts. But they rigged up this, like, ice chest with ice and these electric fans. Mm, uh, yeah. like, plugged into their, their lighter sockets to blow the ice on them. These guys are something else. I don't know how they made it. That sounds like it would be a bummer to be yeah, a part of that was. band. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that to time. be in that van, yeah. absolutely. For that time frame. Um but yeah, uh, so I, I think you guys kind of popped up on my radar when you guys started playing through here a lot. I, you'd play Archetype a lot, and I think some of the shows were with like the Holy Ghost, uh, Tabernacle Choir, yeah. and a couple other bands. So you guys have uh, come through here a lot, and I think we ran into you guys at Furnace Fest as well last year. So yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, how long have you guys been a band completely? Are you you more like a in the last decade, five years type thing, right? Uh, total, like Jeremy and I, uh, started it in 2000, end of 2015. Yeah. So okay. some years Crow joined in 2018, I believe. So after so, you were on, I mean, that's uh, technically yeah. the start of it. Okay. So Crow wasn't on any of the blacklight stuff that came out in blacklight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, she, uh, every, everything that you can hear now is with her. Okay. Uh, we had a different vocalist before, um, just didn't work out with, with that. And then uh, decided we tried Crow out, and she killed it. And then ever since, you know, we we think Locust Preacher was the first song we wrote with her. And we only took like two or three songs that we had in the catalog before her time, uh, so everything else was new. And it just kind of had a pulled the direction we wanted to take that band even further. Yeah. So God, I fucking hate talking about COVID, but here we go again because you guys yeah. started out before COVID. Then obviously, one third of your you know, time as a band is spent in that, you know, window. So, uh, it was horrible. Yeah. I think, and again, I think, I don't know for sure if I saw you before COVID or right afterwards. I believe it was after, I believe the first, the first time we played Jacksonville, which was at archetype was, was after COVID. Okay. I think it was 
2021, I believe we were able to do something in like November of that year. Yeah. And I believe that's when we went out there. We met up with Holy Ghost and all of them. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. I think the first show back that was like March for me of that year with Madball there at Archetype. <laughs> it was fucking crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It was packed. So you could, you know, imagine. Uh, I definitely was like, we're going to get, someone's going to get sick for sure. I think we all that's got sick. Yeah, I think we all did. Yeah, that was a guarantee. Just like sick and not COVID. Just like we hadn't been around anybody at like months, you know what I mean? And then you put 200 of us or something in a room and yeah. someone's going to get the sniffles, you know? Oh, absolutely. But yeah, so um, I want to talk about like the new album and, you know, signing to Metal Bay because that's pretty big. Uh, you guys started out on uh, Blacklight. You had a release or two on there. And then, yeah, you just, you kind of announced and, you guys have announced the new album earlier this month and released, like you said, the new single. So how did, mm-hmm. how did you guys get on the radar for Metal Blade? Um, we have been working with uh, Matt Bacon for a long time. Um, just been friends with him for a while. And then kind of, he was helping us get our like social media down. Cause we're like, like you said, we're like, we come from a DIY background where it's like, <laughs> we yeah. don't like social media. We don't want to post. We don't, I honestly, I never expected people to listen to this band. So it, it, it was just kind of like for us and for our friends. And then Matt just kept pushing us. He's like, you know, people are going to want to hear this. Then I think it got into the hands of Chris Santos, who owns Blacklight Media. Uh, he loved it. He brought it to Brian Slagle. Brian loved it. And all of this was just unbelievable to me. I was like, are you serious? Like people like, they like this. Like, okay. That's awesome. Uh, so, and then COVID happened, you know, we got an email, I think in December or January, maybe 2020, um, from Metal Blade uh, and Blacklight to sign. And we were like, oh yeah, this is crazy. So as we're working it out, then the pandemic hits in March mm-hmm. and we're like, oh, Metal Blade shut down, everything shut down. We were like, we might've just like got offered a deal, lost the deal because of this. <laughs> right, right. So we don't know what's happening. Uh, but they did hit us up again in July of 2020 and we made it we made it happen we uh added some more songs to in transmission and got to put it out in april of 2021 which is only because we tried to push it as far back as we could yeah in order to tour with it and even then we couldn't tour with it at that time yeah so So we waited till november to tour It, it was a mess just having that album done for so long and then uh like you know being able to tour it a year later um, it just set everything back, you know. Oh, but yeah, it allowed us sure. to, to write more songs for the next album and stuff like that. For sure, for sure. Um, you 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 mentioned just now about social media and like a lot of DIY bands. What the fuck is that all about? I hate that because like when I try to share something about like a band that maybe is less known, right? Like, let's say it's like a lesser known hardcore or metal band, and they're newer. And I'm out here like, oh, I really dig this thing. Let me try to, uh, you know, give them some love on Lamb Goat or whatnot and post mm-hmm. and share their stuff. Then I'll go look around and see, like, they don't have social media. And it boggles my head. And yes. it, it bums me out because I can't, like, you know, get, I can't uh, point the audience that's looking at Lamb Goat to a specific place other than maybe, like, a Spotify or, or the, the you right. know, YouTube Band link or something. Or something yeah. Like that. yeah. So what do you what is what what is that whole situation like? Is it just bucking the social media thing? Because now that we're like you know almost twenty years with social media, like people are like ah fuck it. Because um, I mean, yeah. I, it I is such a tool. It. it is a tool. We, we we had it at the time, just like kind of barely used it. Um, I, I think what it is is one kind of feel like just nobody cares, and and also this is for me. I do this for me. And two, it it sort of makes it feel like a job. Honestly. Yeah, no, I get that. Having to do that constantly and all day and stuff like that. Is it something that one person would would handle in your band, or would like multiple people? Oh yeah, it? I do it. Yeah. yeah, you should probably get multiple people to do it, and then it doesn't feel like a job. Although I understand well, it's a job anyway. Yeah, you know, I mean, we all have our own things that that we do to to yeah. contribute, and then you know, certain things with social media, I've just learned to do, <laughs> and it's kind of one of those things where if somebody else does it, I'm like, mm, that's not right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I understand. Yeah, it was so. I because I was talking to even the guys at Rev HQ, and they were like, "Yeah, we were talking about a certain band. I'm not gonna say who they are, but they were like, they just 
don't care about it, so I just made one for them, <laughs> and, and like they yeah, run it. Like a fan page. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's a fan page for the band, like, but it's right. supposed to be the band's page, but the band has nothing to do with it. Yeah. So there's all, so many great bands that just don't have a social media presence. Yeah, I know, and I, it kind of I wonder like how that works too for the band. I mean, like it goes back to like the tape tape trading and like word of mouth days, obviously, like that kind of vibe, which makes it cool. But also, like, I don't know. Sometimes I can forget about a band if I don't see their stuff on social media because I'm on social media so often. And, right. you know, all this stuff is just go, flying by on the feed. And, you know, if I see a visual aid, it kind of keeps that band fresh in my mind. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange how, like, certain bands just don't give a shit and they'll just power forward and just continue doing well. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, that was probably... Yeah the best uh example of that like for <laughs> years they didn't have it uh brian had started nola diy website which would announce their shows now they have like uh, i think now they use like twitter and instagram and stuff but their facebook is still just like a fan group that was made for them mm. yeah do you need a facebook i mean i don't know all the old cats are on facebook so who knows yeah, I, I honestly hardly ever use it. I do Instagram and Twitter and, and stuff, but like Facebook, I'll just post and get out of there. Yeah. Like our uh, our audience is definitely on Facebook. That's just because, you know, we're all older guys oh, yeah. that are into metal. So oh, yeah. the, 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 a lot of them are on there. We're trying to grow the uh, younger audience, you know, then we're pretty good at it. But, uh, you know, covering newer bands like yourself and the Holy Ghost and Callus and all those other bands that we were talking about prior to getting on here. Um, you know, we're trying to grow the scene in general and grow the audience introduce more people to wilder crazy life ruining music yeah and it's it's definitely out there oh. i mean i think some of these newer bands that are coming out are just they're they're changing the game honestly for sure i agree a lot of the newer like younger super young bands like on days and um all those fuck, what's the other one I'm fucking blanking right now. Flat Spot and all those other bands, or all those other labels, yeah. they've gotten some really cool, even metalcore bands, but mostly hardcore bands that are really pumping the scene, uh, the younger kids into the scene. But to each his own. Um, you guys are leaving for Europe tomorrow, so by the time fans and people are listening to this, you might still be in Europe. Um, looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, it should be a fun time. We have some cool shows, some cool festivals to do. Uh, a little stressful, but yeah. How long we'll is that make trip? It. How long is the trip over there for you guys? Uh, I think we we fly back August twenty eighth. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm sorry. Like, how long is the travel time from from like where you're at in Louisiana to wherever you'll be? When what's the first date? France. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, it's, really, it's so confusing. We leave tomorrow, uh, two p.m. from New Orleans, but then we fly to Houston, then we fly to Denver think then to france so wow. it's a lot of traveling and we'll get there the next day um but i think we only have like 12 hours until the first show nice okay do you guys travel with all your equipment or do you like get equipment uh, uh, across the pond oh yeah yeah a whole back line set up for that and then we bring like i bring my guitars uh two basses and cymbals pretty much it interesting um, and why, in your opinion, why do some bands not bring, like, why do some bands just go direct in? Is it is it for travel expenses? Because some of those bands that I've seen are, like, coming from Australia and some of the, like, metalcore bands from Europe, mm -hmm. they'll just come over uh, and I'll, like, what, you know, I'll see them stay, I'll see them perform and I'm like, ah, there's no fucking backline or, you know, amps. I was like, and it, it visually just throws me off. Why they're not using amps is beyond me, but... <laughs> I, I mean, shipping amps is, is very hard. I'm, backline's not cheap, so I understand, like, that part of it. Maybe they can't afford to do that with travel expenses and stuff. Um, These are bigger bands, so I would hope they can if you guys are doing it. No offense, but if you're taking your stuff over there, I would expect these bands to bring their yeah, stuff over. Dude, honestly, I have no idea. I have to have the amp, man. Yeah. I, it just got to have it. It just looks off, to be honest with you, and I've seen a handful of bands that do that, and it's like, it just, I don't know, man. Well, you also don't feel that power from right. the amp. Right, No, I get that. Well, whatever. What are you looking for? Where are you looking forward to uh, going to most in Europe? Is this your first, is this like your first time in Europe? Uh, So it's Capra's first time in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, what I meant to say. Another tour. I did a tour in 2018 with a different band. 
out there for a month and a half, two months. Um, and it's cool. Uh, there's, I, I don't really do the, the whole touristy thing. I mean, we don't really have time to do the whole yeah. touristy thing. So, uh, just some of the festivals we're playing like brutal assault and, uh, summer breeze metal days, stuff like that. It's going to be very fun. Um, I know there's some really cool bands playing. I think Converge is playing one of the days that, that will be there. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Are you guys going by yourself and you're just playing with bands along the way? Yep. Nice. How, did you guys, um, was that a DIY booking situation or was that with through like Black Light? No, we, we have a European booking agent out there. Oh, nice. Growing pains, right? Yeah. That's, That's good. Right. That's good. That's good. Um, are you guys at Furnace Fest this year? Because I know you guys played last year, and I thought we ran into each other, and you were selling hot sauce, right? Or no, the hot sauce guy was next to you. That hot sauce guy was next to us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was good, too. Um, but no, we're not there this year. We just did the the Benefit Bash nice, in June. Yeah. How was that? So we did we did that. Um, maybe we'll play next year. I think it's like an every other year type thing. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Sometimes they do. They they. I know that's yeah. what they try to strive for, but then I'm like, this band's played last year too. this band played last year too right <laughs> which i'm not complaining I, you know what I, mean? it, I think it depends on maybe like a new album or something or i know like so last year comeback kid played like twice that was their second year to play but they had and just figure released, four uh, and figure four was playing too they were all over yeah it was incredible um but they the comeback kid played twice i think just because of the album release and stuff like that uh and then Norma Jean had issues last year, yeah, so yeah. they're going to do it again this year with a better time. <laughs> it was great because Maylene had issues with the with the microphone, and then seeing them do the benefit bash was awesome. Yeah, was gonna, yeah. How was that? Like, um, incredible. Yeah, Dallas is. We, we've been working with Dallas on some stuff, so we're looking forward to putting that out. But so, when we were there last year, it was very. Uh, I mean, you can't really fault anybody for it, but the. Right. The the microphone situation was like a bummer, and I was like, something's off because like you know I'm on stage, and I'm like something sounds off because you know I don't know if they can hear them, but yeah, yeah. It took no, a I, songs. I don't know what happened. Uh, and then you know they came out for a song, caution. Everybody wanted to hear that. <laughs> Vocals didn't work. It was cool seeing the crowd sing it and yeah. do everything. Um, but I know that was probably a, a nightmare to be on stage for while sure. that was happening. Um, what are some other like? Because I was thinking that's a pretty memorable moment. Dallas has come back and, and some other things. What are some other moments that you've kind of been a part of witnessing while in the band, like playing a festival or playing a tour or something like that? Have you had any one of those, like, what the fuck am I doing here kind of moments? You know, like, how'd I make it here? I mean, pretty much every day at this point. We just did, April was a tour with Kill Switch Engage. Oh, which yeah, 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 yeah. Out. I used to joke, like, oh, next year we'll be touring with Kill Switch Engage. Like, and, and then it happened. <laughs> which was insane manifesting uh, so many things like I, I mean the news is out there now because everybody's seen the track list for the new album but um our next single uh which is going to be a song called human commodity we have candace from walls of jericho as a guest vocalist song nice which is insane to me because it's just you know getting adding crow to the band at the time where we parted ways with our last vocalist um I, I really wanted to switch things up and I, I wanted to, uh, I, I literally put a status on Facebook that was like, hardcore needs more women. Um, and then we got in touch with Crow, but it was, it was all inspired by, you know, Walls of Jericho. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to Gouge Way and Oathbreaker at the time. And so it's just kind of, it's kind of like when those worlds like had the inspiration and then like why we did it comes together and it's, it's an incredible feeling. Yeah. Was there any kind of mix up, not mix up, but any kind of like, you know, not, I don't want to commotion when you guys switched over vocalist within the fan base? No, no, no. I mean, we really didn't have a fan base at that time. It, we were, we were like just on the local level. Like everybody in our city knew who we were, we were and what we were doing. Um, but no, it was pretty smooth. Nice. Uh, and I think people understood, you know? Yeah. Um, when did you guys start realizing that you were, the people outside Louisiana were like giving a shit? Hmm. I think when the album came out, yeah. honestly, uh, or w probably February or March of 2020, whenever the locust preacher came out, we dropped that song. That was the first time anyone was hearing, uh, this band with Crow on vocals right. to do something. 
or maybe I'm confused because I think we released an EP with her on it as well. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it's just that kind of took off quicker than I imagined. Interesting. And um, <laughs> sorry. And what was like? What's the what's the motivation and inspiration for Capra? Because you were in other bands prior, so are you approach like? Do you approach? Or do you and the uh, the rest of the members approach Capra differently from your previous stuff, or is there like a goal with Capra? Um, well, uh, Jeremy and I have been in, I think nine bands together over the course of our life, and then you know Crow had her own bands, Trevor had his own bands, uh, and over the years we we kind of just all were doing things that I think were popular, like it, you know there was like phases of different genres in music, like, like following like, oh, a trend, like following a trend or something. I can, like yeah, I can play that like. You know, if there was two or three doom bands in our city, it'd be like, let's start a doom band and let's make it awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so we did that, and uh, that was that was our band right before. It was Jeremy and I's band right before we started Capra, uh, and then I went through like I, I mean I was I was uh, struggling with addiction through all of that, so I ended up going to rehab, and mm. I went for like three months. I got out. And when I moved back, Jeremy was like, do you still want to, you want to jam? And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to play that slow stuff anymore. Like, I, just bo I was bored. Gotcha. Um, I wanted to go back to my roots and I just wanted to play what I wanted to play, uh, which was just fast punk hardcore. Nice. And how'd you get into like all this life ruining music? Um, Probably my, my uncle, he got me into, he gave me like a Metallica CD when I was younger and I was like, oh, this is cool. But then I got into like Slipknot and only because I would go to show, I was probably nine, 10 years old and I'd go to shows and I'd see the Slipknot logo. <laughs> and it, that looks cool. Like I like the font, you yeah. know, it spoke to me. So I got into Slipknot, that changed my life. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's like, funny. I'm, it's funny how many hardcore dudes are like, yeah, Slipknot. But, you know, I remember like, Slipknot, I remember dude, the... I was, like, Morning. I went through the whole new metal phase. Oh yeah, we all did, dude. But I remember there was a time where it was like faux pas to wear the Slipknot shirts at in the at, at the shows, and then it became like the thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. So yeah, I got the I got the uh, first Slipknot CD. Listened to it hundred thousand times, um, and then I think at some point, like I was able to download music and. I got this thing called after Napster and LimeWire and all that stuff. There was this crazy downloading service called SoulSeek. Yeah, is, I know it's not like a like dating service. Dog, but... it is still active today, and I still use it today. Okay, perfect. Because yeah. uh, I would get like so many of my friends would just send me albums. They'd be like, "Hey, here's a whole album." I'd be like, "Okay, dope." So I got sent like Minor Threat and Bad Brains, and I was just like, "That that's that's where I wanted to go with it," you know? Yeah. When I had that like punk element to music and i think hardcore came in uh with watching the hellfest dvds 30 times <laughs> every day yeah so i added you know that uh, whole converge and botch and every time i die is that how you I, got into walls yes through the dvd yeah because they were on oh, a couple yeah. of those dvds absolutely for sure. yeah and then i kind of just lived in that time period ever since so you just are you saying that you that you that your go-to uh, for like quote unquote scene music is like early 2000s like 90s is that like yes. your okay yeah I feel you I agree that's a that's a cool yeah. that's a cool I, part I, of time it's, it's really hard to move on from yeah and, I, and for years I was just jaded with new music and it, it was like I was listening I was like okay it's not what I'm used to though you know I want that chaotic element I want that raw feeling and everything was so polished for yeah. so long and now finally there's you know really good bands coming out that, that have that yeah, I think a lot of that is to do with, uh, and I've talked about it a few times, so I apologize to those who listen, you know, once in a while and already heard me say this, but uh, there was like a bastardization, I feel like, in the mid-2000s for like metalcore and hardcore, because it started yeah. getting on like MTV and, you know, it started getting legs, you know, uh, MySpace was really doing well for, you know, the underground hardcore and metalcore and metal world, so... Uh, I feel like, like you were saying, production got a little different. It was started, like, bands stopped doing, like, you know, smaller studios and actually had producers and actually had, like, real studio equipment. And things started, like right. you said, sounding a little more polishing, a little more polished. And uh, 
also the the writing of the music became more like I want to be on MTV, but I want to still be like a metalcore hardcore band. So Agreed. it's like, how do I do that? And then I think right. we went almost a decade like that. And I want to yeah. say, well, I think, it, I mean, it's, it's probably all in our like same 10 year age range where I just think when you're at a certain age, younger, like, uh, that, that feeling of that you get from music kicks in and that stays just in the nostalgia region, right. you know? So it, it's like, that's, that made you feel something at that time. And nowadays that's your go-to. That's just what you, you bring back and you recall. But I think that's why we had like this resurgence of that raw feeling, and it's just creative. It's very creative. It's, uh, there, there's bands doing things that are new and fresh, but still give you the feeling of the old school days and that time period of music, which yeah. is, was a main goal for this band cool. and what I wanted to do. Yeah, uh, like kind of nod back to that sound or that time frame, but also, excuse me. Um, I, th I think a lot of, I think the sound is changing because I th like, like you were saying, it was too polished and it didn't sound like enough. There wasn't, it wasn't enough grit and there wasn't enough DIY feel to it. And I think when bands would hear like, uh, or when people would hear a band from like 2010 to 2015, and then they would hear a band from 2012, uh, 2000 to 2005, the audio sounds drastically different. I mean, oh, yeah. but it, it also sounds different because like equipment and, you know, uh, everything just got better for producing too. So it's not just, Agreed, yeah. you know, that the band sold out, everything has gotten better, but I think they also have like producers and engineers and, and people that, you know, work on audio have kind of tuned it in to where like they can still use all this like great equipment and all these great technologies, but it still sounds raw or still sounds like fucking recorded from a tin can, but, but good. Agreed. Yeah. And I think uh, just in that time period, you know, uh, I say Converge, they were just writing songs and that's what it was. That was the song. Yeah. And then progressively, I think more bands started adding more layers uh, to their, you know, just different guitar. Like th there's three guitar layers on one thing. Uh, you can't play that live. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, if you're one guitar player, like you can't do that. So it's just it's so polished and, and overproduced and that's not my thing. I don't like that. Yeah. It, you know, I can, I can take, take it with some and leave it with a lot. That's what I'll say. Yeah. I can do that. Um, are you guys, um, I know walls is, you know, they're like starting to gear back up, right? Are you guys, would you, oh, yeah. are you guys uh, maybe thinking about doing a little run with them? Uh, I mean, I would love to. Yeah. yeah, we're we're doing. I know they're they're going to Europe at the same time. We're on opposite days. Uh, kind of sucks because I was hoping one of those days we'd be able to maybe do that that track. Well, oh, it'll yeah, happen yeah, yeah. at some point. We'll be able to do, it. Um, and just see them again. I saw them at Furnace the last time they were there. Uh, that was so cool. Yeah, I had to well, run. What was that? Try to see the uh, Converge was playing. They were on the small stage by the lake. Oh, while wow, Converge was playing? Converge had started. That was 2021. I remember the schedule. Yeah, the first, was so the first one back. Yeah, that first one was crazy. I Yeah, no wonder I don't remember them because I was at Converge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my bad. Sorry, Walls. Everybody was playing at the same time. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Thursday, it was rough. Walls of Jericho and, and, and uh, Converge at the same time. What are you going to do? I know what I did. Run. I know what I did, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, God, well, I just went blank. Uh, speaking of which, for those who are, I know we talked about Soul Seek, and obviously, like, you may not have known it's still around, but Soul Seek's still around. Yeah, you, nah. you can Google that shit, uh, and like, yeah, you can download full albums, and you can. It's like a peer to peer situation where you look up someone's like uh, shared files, just like I don't know, yeah. like Napster or, or used to do. It's and, the best uh, music downloading uh, social media. I mean, you, just, you add people, you see what they're listening to, and you can chat. Yeah, it's wild. Awesome. I, yeah, I, yeah, I forgot about it for a lot of years. And then a buddy of mine about five years ago was like, you ever heard of Soul Seek? And I was like, I probably heard of Soul Seek way before you did. I didn't know it was still around. Yeah, I was 10 or yeah. 11. There, and you're the first person I've done an interview with where I've mentioned Soul Seek and, and knew what it was. Oh, yeah. It's like the little um, sprite thing that's flying, like the blue blue ghost right. thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. Download it and use it, everybody. 
Use it. Oh, wait, no, don't do that. Sorry. Download don't, our app. Don't do that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. What are, the, what are you most looking forward once the album comes out? What are you most looking forward to? Being able to play these songs. Are oh, you not playing them uh, now? Seeing how people are going to react to our entire album. Do you uh, not play you know, any new stuff got, now? You have to be playing We, we do play a few of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah, we, we're mixing in old songs, new songs, playing mostly stuff from In Transmission. And then we've we've done, we've added in four four songs from the new album. Nice. Which will grow as as we release more singles, and then next year just do a bunch of new stuff and throw in a few st- uh, songs from In Transmission. Um, you said you uh, um, you don't have to talk about this. You don't want to, but you said you had some addiction issues and you were in rehab for a little bit. Do you? Yep. What, okay, we can talk about that if you want to. I won't sure. go super deep, but I got no problem with it. Cool. Um, so. What, what what brought you to rehab in in the beginning? Was it just like alcohol, or was it just like other kind of drugs of choice, or uh, a lot a lot of drugs besides heroin? Uh, <laughs> mostly alcohol and cocaine were my two drugs of choice. It, is that uh, something that's just like a local situation? Like, is it? I mean, because the south, we, I don't know. I feel like the south parties a lot, and there's a lot more party stuff going on, where like yeah. people have the access to that kind of stuff a lot. Prevalent, yeah. Prevalently? I, I mean, it's it's pretty much it, it was everywhere and is everywhere now. Now is a little bit more dangerous than then, right? Um, but yeah, I everybody over here parties, they drink, um, so it was hard to escape the alcohol part in Louisiana <laughs> for sure. Uh, and then I, it was just a, a series of like mental health issues and depression and uh, not being where I wanted to be, so I'd, I'd use it as an escape. And it got out of hand for just years. Yeah. So, uh, you know, finally I, I put myself in rehab for, I don't know, the fifth or sixth time. Oh, wow. Trying to to get off of this and change. And, and it worked. Thank I'm, God. I'm going to ask you just the stereotypical question. What? Why did the fifth time stick? And why didn't the other times before? Because if you had taken yourself before, were you, just, yeah. were you taking yourself just to like, I should probably do this? Or... Did it work its way the, up to like I, think I the need first two to times were to please others. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no intention of stopping. I hadn't uh, hit a level where I felt that I needed to. I was also convinced that I didn't have an issue. Mm. Uh, so the last the last time, I think there was a mixture between um, being hypnotized, I think, in some sort of way, uh, but also knowing that I could not continue on the path that I was continuing. Yeah. So back it up to the hypnotized thing. Did you go to a hypnotist or were you just like, no, okay. no, I didn't go. To it. No, I'm just. <laughs> that's just my guess. At what I don't know why oh, it okay. stuck or why it worked. I, I think that I just got to a point in my life where I was so low that I didn't want to any lower, and I wouldn't be here anymore. Got gotcha. you. Too bad you didn't go to a hypnotist, though. I've never spoken to anyone that has gone to one. I have Me so neither, many questions. Would, yeah. So cool. Especially if you're like a Louisiana hypnotist, that's almost like voodoo, almost. I thought about it with uh, stopping cigarettes as well, but I never did it. Are you still smoking cigarettes? No. No? Nice. Are you, um, I don't want to say like straight edge, but are you like, Are you clean? Do you no longer drink or no longer partake in any other uh, extracurricular shit? No. I mean, I, I like, in, according to like, I guess the real straight edge, like I'm not because I do vape and I drink coffee and they have all these rules. Right, so, right. No, uh, you know, I just, I don't drink and I I'm sober for uh, just hit eight years. Oh wow! Congratulations. This month, so yeah. I went a year. But, I went a year one time without doing anything. Nice. Just cause I want to try it, and then uh, I will say, the first like couple weeks, the worst, and then once you get out of that, because you have to be around. Like I, I did at least. I had to be around people in settings that uh, had like alcohol and other things going on, but right. you know. After a while, people realized I wasn't drinking. And then um, shortly after that, I was like, everyone's just annoying when I'm not, when I'm yeah. not partying. Everyone else is fucking yeah. annoying, dude. That's true. Yeah. That is true. And then it kind of uh, fucked my tolerance up altogether. So now I can only, if I sniff a beer, I'm, you know, that's the joke around here. Like if I sniff a beer, I can get, you know, a little too right. lit. Yeah. 
No, I mean, that's how it goes. It, it is tough. It is super hard. I think the first, like, two years for me were just insanely hard, especially, like, playing music, going to venues, playing in bars. You're hanging out with people that Sports are... Or on the road in general, too, bars. yeah. And then in Louisiana, it's like if you're, you you tell somebody you don't drink, they they look at you like you're insane. <laughs> I think that's here in Florida, too. <laughs> like, confused by it. Yeah. Like, Especially sure? if you had, it's like, especially all the people that you were, I drank with. I mean, and I drink now too. But it's just a different, it's a different situation these days. But yeah, it's few and far between. Uh, but yeah, that's it, it's fun. It's funny when you're going through that. How like your perspective drastically changes on so many things. It's tough sometimes. Yeah, I don't judge anybody that drinks or anything. And I, no, no, and then, no, no, like, I you know, you, you run across that situation too, where it's like people are apologetic. Like, I'm so sorry I'm drinking in front of you. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm good. Like, you do what you do. I'm a grown up. Uh, so, um, yeah. So how was like, uh, how was rehab? Just like, was it a local facility? Did you go somewhere like out of state? It was or? best time of my life. Yeah? Like every time or just the last time? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, some of the worst times of my life. Um, well, if you don't want to be there, I can see why that. a few of them didn't work, but the last time was okay. Uh, I was comfortable. I knew I wanted to be there and do what I was doing. So I went through with everything. It, it's just, you know, you just live there. You do like group sessions, talk about things. I think it made me more open as a person too, to be honest and like, you know, vulnerable with feelings and stuff like that. I don't know. It's weird. But... It is. And I, I, um, I don't know if that's like my upbringing or my personality or is it because like i joined the the hardcore scene at like you know late teens and you had to be yeah. a hardcore tough guy and you just were like a man right you had to be like a man about right. it and so you have that kind of preconceived notions and then when someone's talking about feelings you're like lame yeah yeah well that's how i was for years and then like i started talking about like how i was feeling and i was like damn this shit feels good yeah some of that comes with age too and maturity yeah yeah, and I mean it's it's all put into our music as well. You know, we're we're all very chill. We're we're super nice. We like to hang out with people. Music's just angry because that's really what we that's what we feel. You know. Yeah, it's also cool. Angry music can be cool. Angry music can also be happy. Like, uh, was it happy angry. music for angry people? August Burns Red or angry music yeah. for happy people? There you go. There you go. Agreed. Hey, when you were, I, I don't want to hop off the subject too far but i wanted to ask you when we were talking about kill switch did you guys spend any time like uh hanging out or like chatting yeah. with them because i know like i think we had um we had currents on and they were like they were kind of um like reserved or doing something else at uh, most of the time yeah uh they i mean they, of course they had a lot of stuff going on um yeah, cause they're all like well, grown adults there was there were going. like i it was crazy because they, I mean, they watched our sets every night. So they were there and attentive and uh, let us know they actually really enjoyed the music. And uh, Jesse made the joke where, you know, he was like, this tour is perfect. It's kind of like it was handpicked because they, 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 they do like this uh, democratic vote on which bands are going to play. And mm. it's cool. I talked to Jesse and Adam uh, mostly, and they're just such down to earth people. It was shocking almost to know that like at their level they're talking about scouring band camp to find bands that are just underground and want to listen to them. Yeah. So That's... like I gave Jesse like this whole list of bands I was like, all right, dude, okay. Got you. Mm -hmm. And he was just typing them into his phone as I'm saying them. Yeah. To go listen to. Who are some that That's... you, uh, who are some that you kind of gave Jesse, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Brat. They're from new Orleans. Uh, one of my, one of my top so like locally i get brat and then uh torture garden also from new orleans uh writhings they're from my hometown um boar under the pier uh, most likely holy ghost i don't know i rambled <laughs> off this whole list and he was just typing them into his notepad on his phone yeah like, Man, you gotta listen to these bands yeah like, they're, they're well, doing that, some cool that's pretty cool that they still try to maintain their ear to the underground because you know it's very easy for bands to just be especially at that level to just be like yeah cut off and just disassociated right well i mean there's some some bigger tours like that uh, you know they're they're after like money you know they're mm -hmm. you pay for the advertisements and stuff like that and it's it's cool to see a band just 
up there like we don't care we want to take the people we want to take on tour uh because we like their music and we enjoy it and we want to support it yeah um so you guys have been pretty busy in the last like handful of months years do you yeah. do anything outside of capra when you're like at home like currently do you have another i don't want to say job but do you have another income source that you have like you know you do on the side to you know carry you over from tours to other things like that yeah we uh, we all have our own thing um and i think mine's probably the weirdest and <laughs> Good. surprises people when i do it but i work for a uh, card shop so i deal with like pokemon cards and uh like magic and meta zoo and stuff like that so i stream um and like, do like pack openings and stuff like that for people hold oh, on what you got you in a box yet? i got a box they're not pokemans or magics but i'm a baseball guy so i've got oh, five awesome. five or six boxes over here to my side this is the that's small awesome. one yeah, yeah so I, I i've been collecting that kind of stuff since i was a kid not so much into like sports i no, no, have I a lot but i don't know anything about it um i definitely i definitely um you know probably not a good idea to mention it on the podcast but i definitely uh grew up watching pokemon playing the game and right. i even played the card game as well i just didn't really collect any of that stuff um because i was i grew out of it my you know, way before I got into like new metal and hardcore, I was out of Pokemon, and I like to call it Pokemon just because. Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, but I, yeah, I, I totally get it. I played Magic. I even played the Star Wars. I never too. played it, but as a kid, I collected it and I kept everything in like mint condition. Mm. And then I got back into it. I think 2018 or 19 when I found all of those cards, and I realized how much money they were worth. So uh, then I, it just sparked this whole, like, oh, I miss doing that, you know? Yeah. So with, like, some of the newer sets, I, I, I got re-addicted to it. Yeah. I definitely spend a lot of my time at night. Uh, I don't watch TV anymore for the most part. Um, and I got, I got flamed on Twitter recently because I said that there's not been a good movie in the last 10 plus years. There has not been a good movie because for some reason movies have just been, like, subpar for the most part it's not like when i was younger but uh i spent a lot of my time watching youtube and um at night and some of that stuff is like card openings and like people streaming cards so you saying yeah. that you do that is pretty funny because i've been down that rabbit hole many times mo mo again mostly on baseball not on like magic or pokemon but when it's you go to the card shop it's an insanely growing business which is nuts and i never saw that coming so yeah luckily i, I made friends with uh some people that own a card shop and they allow me to do that from home. So nice. Just constantly working with my hands. <clears throat> what's the, um, what's your, what's your biggest grail that you have, that you own? And what's one that, that you I don't own? Have? <gasps> um, I don't know how to go through that. I have a ton. You got like a Charizard uh, bro. Isn't the Charizard the one? Uh, I mean, I had this right here. An unopened sealed pack. Is first it graded? Edition you have a graded from, pack? Uh, yeah, this is unopened. It's first edition fossil from 1999. Nice. One of the first sets. Do you have any graded I ones? Like, uh, I have like a crazy PSA 10 collection. Nice. Okay. You know? So you're in, you're in, you're in the shits. We're talking about a lot of stuff people probably have no idea now. You know, we've lost yeah, them all. Right. 45 minutes in, they're all gone anyway. Right. So. I mean, they're done at <clears> this point. Do you ever go? Uh, we're gonna go down a rabbit hole now, big dog. Uh, do you ever do card shows? No, no. I wish I would love to. Do you just have? Do you just not have time? Just go to one. I it yeah. So like my my uh, the the card shop that I work for they're in Dallas, Texas, and every time there's like a comic con or a card show that they go to, I'm on tour. So mm. I, I haven't been able to make it yet. And you'll be on tour tomorrow, so tomorrow. You, you're definitely not going to be at the national in Chicago this weekend. <laughs> I uh, will not, unfortunately. Yeah. We'll be in Chicago September. Oh, the card yeah. show will not be there. But, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people are probably clowning on us right now talking about cards, but they <clears throat> I'm, I've never seen – I think Magic and Pokemon cards are, like, probably the most expensive that I see on a regular basis uh, yeah. just because it's a game and people play it, whereas, like, sports cards – well, I, football is – some of the football and soccer and UFC shit is insane. I don't collect any Absolutely. of that stuff. But the only one I collect is baseball. But 
I think baseball is like the least valuable out of the the, the ones I've been messing with lately. But uh, it is insane how much. I mean, like Possibly, we're talking thousands. Some of those football cards I've seen have gone for like they have the one of ones. You right, know what right, I mean? Right. Six those figures, are... six figures, seven figures. Yeah. Sometimes it is nuts. Buy a house and change your life, money. Yeah, especially if you like. And that's the problem. Do you, as a card collector and buyer, because Dylan, uh, my partner in, in Lamb Goat, is also a baseball card enthusiast as well. Probably yeah. why I got back into the. The fucking stupid hobby that's just a money pit but do it you is. do you buy the pack to open the pack or do you buy the card what is your uh, what's your so for a while i was buying the pack to uh play the game and then realized i am not rich <laughs> so now i buy like I, I i dwindled down what i collect to certain things but now i just if i if i have uh some extra money and want to treat myself as like you know something like that i, I do like a psa 10 or yeah yeah you know, i just get it how it's gonna make money in the future i, I don't buy just the card i want it at the 10 that way later <laughs> it's in immaculate condition right best condition it can be and for those who don't know what the nerds are talking about he has a psa <laughs> graded 10 card yeah <laughs> he has a psa 10 graded card which is like a mint near mint like top of the line immaculate card that I think the values for the, the, the values between a nine, 9.5 and a 10 can sometimes be thousands of dollars, if not more. So yeah. Yeah. When you get a nine, when you get a nine, that's cool. And it's a great card and you may yeah. not see anything wrong with it, but if you somehow get a grader that gives you a 10, you've instantly just like double, triple quadrupled your value of that card at a nine level or more. So yeah. All right, nerd talk. We've lost everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's get back into some music stuff to round out the end here. Yeah. What's the overall overarching goal for the band? Like, what would be a success? What What, what does success look like to Capra as a band, not just to you? Uh, I think the answer would be that we've we've already attained that level of success that we were looking for last month. Mm -hmm. And then, so now we, we just keep upping it to like, what's the next level we can go. And then I honestly don't think I'll ever be satisfied. I will keep going and going and going until I, I don't, I don't know what happens. You know? Yeah. So where do you uh, see, we, what, what do we're you We're doing see? very cool stuff that we, some, most of us, all of us have just dreamed about. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, Again, the, when I was, when I talked to Currents about the Kill Switch <clears throat> gig, I mean, when that lineup came out, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "How did you, like?" No offense to you guys, but I've seen you kind of start, you know, in the last yeah. couple of years. So it's like I know the shows you guys are playing and, and where you guys are at in your trajectory, and so, and so to speak. But also, it's like, how the fuck did that happen? I mean, that's great. That was great for you guys, obviously. And it's great, obviously, because now... We asked the same question, honestly. <laughs> but we, I, clearly it's because Jesse and the band do give kind of a shit about who they align themselves with on the road. So, you yeah. know, it's good. It's great to know that they're doing at least three seconds of research for who they're sharing stages with. Yeah, absolutely. They, they had listened to us and loved our music. I think Adam had talked about us on a podcast one time, which we were all just like... He mentioned our name. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, and then we started joking about touring with them, and then it happened. So you've already kind of had a dream tour, so to speak. What's the next dream tour? Um, we have some things to announce pretty soon. That I think I, I don't know how I don't know how much higher I can go. Oh yeah. We have we have a uh, we have some really cool shows coming up. Um, we, we do have some more announcements to make and drop this year and just kind of all going so quickly. And, well, I'm looking yeah. forward to the Limp Bizkit Capra tour. That is for sure. That's no. as big as you can get, big dog. You joke, but <laughs> see what happens in the next few weeks. Hey, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm honestly hoping because I yeah. am probably the biggest Limp Bizkit fan there is. I'm from Jacksonville. Are you kidding me? Come on. Yeah. I, I would... We'll talk after the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. We definitely will. Um, <clears throat> so, any last thoughts before we kind of 
cut out here. There's only three people listening total that cared about cards, Capra, and you know, hardcore, mm-hmm. metallic hardcore. You mean one other mystery yep. person? Yeah, probably, probably um, some guy that works for Lamb Goat that's just you know having to edit this. So, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I hope everybody enjoyed the you know at least first. 35 percent of the 35 minutes dude what are you talking about we went a while we did go a while talking music yeah uh no but i i mean we have way too much coming up i'm stressed so we're gonna we're gonna get through it all and uh make it happen we got some new singles coming out with a new music video pretty soon uh album, album. drops on six metal blade metal, metal blade, blade. And we've got uh, some stuff coming in November, and then we'll see what happens next year. Cool. I mean, end to end. Nowadays, <laughs> whenever we're talking about shows and booking, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, just let me get through this one, and we'll talk about the next. So one. you don't you you um how far out are your is your schedule booked? Um, Do you have an through, idea? Through November, so we're okay. going to take December off. That's for sure. And you don't and have we'll anything start. planned for the early next year. We are working on a few things. We have uh, some offers that have come in, and then we're trying to plan out a, a, a full U.S. tour. So at some point next year, we'll be able to line that up and see how it works out. Cool. Well, awesome. Yeah, if you're still here, you got the album October 6th, Capra. You can find them on social media these days. Don't worry. They're on there. And uh, there. yeah. They're leaving for Europe tomorrow, so by the time this is out, they're either still there or, or just coming back. We don't know yet. The future holds yeah. everything. We'll be back August 28th, 29th, something like that. Oh, yeah. Those so, we, so next month, we start the, the tour. Or I say next month. Uh, September, we start the tour with Zayo um, mm-hmm. through um, we play a first show with them in Detroit and come down to Chicago. Great. Great band, too. Great band. Yeah. Well... Check them out, Capra. Tyler, thank you for your time. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you again at some point. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, no problem.